So DaVinci Resolve 18.5 has finally come out of beta and is now available for a general public release on the Blackmagic Design support page. Alternatively, you can just open up your version of DaVinci Resolve, a little update box should pop up, allowing you to download the most up-to-date version. So if you can, I would urge you to do that because there's a lot of great features inside 18.5. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of my very favorite features of DaVinci Resolve 18.5. And in particular, the ones that I think are gonna make the biggest impact to my working life as a professional, but also I hope to yours, whatever video level you're working in, because these are features that have had the biggest impact on my working life over the last few months. And I specifically waited to do a video on DaVinci Resolve 18.5 because I really didn't want to just talk about beta features and things that might well change or develop or be very different when it actually comes out for a general release. So now that we know where we are with these, we can start talking about them and we will get to some of the higher end features of 18.5 that have been talked about a lot already. I'll do separate videos on those. But for now, these are my favorite DaVinci Resolve 18.5 updates that are gonna make a real difference to your editing workflow. Just very quickly before we start the main content, guys, I wanna just introduce myself for those of you who are new around here. My name is Alex, I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer, video producer, content creator, and my aim here on this channel is to help you get the very best out of your video production, especially and specifically with DaVinci Resolve. So if you're interested, you might wanna hit that subscription button and get onto the channel regularly so that you can learn an awful lot from hopefully the videos that we have on here. And again, if you're back for more videos, Welcome back, really appreciate you taking the time to check it out. It's been a long time and I've been missing you guys. So welcome back indeed. Looking forward to jumping in with today's video. So in DaVinci Resolve 18.5, one of the features that I've really enjoyed using is the fact that now when you've graded a multicam clip, you don't end up losing that grade when you collapse the multicam clip. What previously would happen is you would right click, you'd come up, you'd go to flatten multicam and you would lose your grade. But as you can see now, we have two options. We can either copy multicam grades or we can retain the grades from the original angles. So these two options obviously give us the choice now whether we want to do anything or not. So let me jump to the color page. I've got this short little sequence here from uh, an excerpt of a wedding. And what I want to do is just take these first 12 shots and I'm gonna apply a grade. And I'm gonna very quickly hit auto color Whoops, <laughs> just to show you it can be done. There you go, Autocolor has not done a terrifyingly bad job, but it's given us a grade. And you can see here we've got a grade showing now. So we've got some grades happening here. So we've graded on top of our multicam clip. Now that's not uncommon. We've graded that multicam, we're quite happy with it. Now we want to just collapse it back to the original footage, but previously we wouldn't be able to do that. So now the great thing is we can, we simply select all our footage, right click, and instead of going flatten multicam and losing everything, which is essentially the same as copying, uh, sorry, essentially the same as retaining the grades from the angles. Let me watch if I do that. See, it just goes back to normal. If I undo that, this time what I would do is right click, come up, flatten multicam, copy multicam grades, and bang. Everything stays exactly as it was. And if I come back to the color page, you can see that those have all still been graded. They still have that horrible auto color but it's working and that is the same if you had a full grade on there. So that's really cool. Great new feature, saves an awful lot of time and faffing about or complicated workflows. So really works well and I've used it a lot. Now this one may not sound like a massive deal, but I really, really am grateful for it. So you can see here I have my media pool and I've got, if I switch to the right timeline, a different time, a timeline with a little grade here of this particular sort of surfing scenario. And I've got some ins and outs marked on my clips in the media pool. Now, what's really sometimes frustrating is having those on there and not being able to clear them away because sometimes you want to move on to a different part of the edit and you just want to remove those ins and outs. Previously, you would have to go through those one by one, selecting them and then pressing the, short, the shortcut for clearing the ins and outs. Now you haven't got to do that. You can simply just select all of them like a lasso select and then press the keyboard shortcut for clear ins and outs, which is option X and goodbye ins and outs. They've all gone. What a handy little feature. Just being able to control those things all in one go. Very useful indeed. And moving straight on to my next favorite feature. This one's really, really cool. The ability to export the current frame as a still. Now you could do this previously, but it was restricted to the color page. You had to jump to the color page. You had to grab a still, which would then appear in your stills library. And then you could then export that from there as a still. Okay, so that's not too bad. That's not too probably cumbersome, I suppose, but it is a bit frustrating. Now, individual resolve 18.5 from the media, 
cut or edit page, you can export the current frame as a still simply by pressing the option which is now available in the file menu and export current frame as still. There isn't a default shortcut. I've given it the F13 shortcut in this instance and you can change that by coming up to keyboard customization and then choosing your preferred shortcut. So in this case, we're gonna go for export. I'm gonna look for where export is on the file menu. Export, current frame is still, and we're gonna give it a new keyboard shortcut by simply typing in, in this box here, hitting plus, and then pressing the shortcut that we want to give it. Having done that, as I say, we can now move to the shot that we want. Maybe that's our shot there. We can simply press our new shortcut, and what happens is it pops up asking us if we'd like to name that particular shot and equally what file format we'd like to put it in and obviously where we'd like to save it. Now what you'll see is in this instance from the media page, it's just given me the clip name and it's also given me the clip time code. If however, I was in the edit page for example and I was working through and I like this particular shot, love that, press F13 which is my shortcut. Notice here now it's given me the name of the timeline and then the time code at which that clip, sorry, that frame appears perfectly in the timeline. So again, it's nice and handy because it is a good way of staying organized. And again, you've got all these different options that you can export in. So a really nice extra feature that will make, certainly my life, pulling stills to share on socials or maybe share with a colleague or fellow editor, really handy, really quick, and saves us going through the color page. This next feature is actually something I was really yearning for and it comes from the Fairlight page, ultimately. In the Fairlight page, you used to be able to open up the index here and move around the audio tracks very simply and easily indeed. And you could just move you know, audio track 10 to audio track one's position and everything would just shuffle around and it was really neatly done. I'd loved that so much, I was desperate for it in the edit page and in DaVinci Resolve 18.5, we finally got it. So what's great here, you'll see I've got an edit here and I've got some shots on video track two and some shots on video track one. Now I can come up to the newly designed index and rather than the edit index, I can come across to my tracks. I can see all my tracks laid out. So audio one, video one, video two. If I want to switch them around, I can simply move video two down to video one and let go and notice how they've switched around. Absolutely ideal, really handy because sometimes you get it wrong. You put a track in the wrong place or set a bunch of tracks in the wrong place uh, and you just wanna move them around and organize them a bit better. You can now do that. Another thing that the track index gives us is the ability to change track controls with one sweep. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say I wanted to disable these two tracks very quickly. Now, there is a keyboard shortcut to disable all the video tracks, but another way would be just to turn them both off like that. Well, now, if you look here in the track index, all I need to do is start and a left click and then swipe down, and I'll turn both of them back on. Similarly, we've got the auto track selection here. If I simply click it and drag down, or click it and drag up, you'll notice how I've turned them on and off, turn them back on, same with the lock, and then unlock. So very nice, you can do that with the mute on the audio channels as well, or the solo on the audio channels too. So really nice, it gives us some extra controls and extra ways of working with our, our tracks in our timeline very nicely indeed. I think this next one's really important and the cache manager is definitely a really cool new update. So naturally you've been working with lots of projects across maybe multiple project libraries and you've been caching files as you go so that your system works more effectively. However, you've kind of moved on from those projects and all of a sudden you get that horrible, you know, memory full or computer storage full and you're thinking, where the heck has all my memory and storage gone? Well, a lot of the time it's because of all these big cache files that are taking up bunches of room on your system, but first of all, you don't know where they are, and second of all, you're not sure if you can delete them or not. Well, this cache manager, which is a new feature inside DaVinci Resolve 18.5, gives you a way of handling and managing this much more efficiently. So we go to playback up at the top menu, we come down to delete render cache, and you'll see that we have manage cache data. Click him and we open up the cache manager. Now what the cache manager will do is it will quickly sort through all of your particular projects in the location and the project library you're looking at. So in this case, I'm looking at all my local projects that are in project library 2023. And as you can see, it's quickly shuffling through those. And I can quite easily sort and order those to work out which ones are my biggest ones and which ones are taking up the most room. And if I want to, I can find another project library, look it up, and then find my render cache, sort my render cache, and then very quickly and easily go through and clear out the cache for the ones I don't need. That will disappear. All of a sudden I get my free space back on my computer and I'm good to go again. It's a really nice extra touch and I love the fact that they've been able to implement the cache manager in DaVinci Resolve 18.5.
So one of the really cool things about DaVinci Resolve is that you have the ability to have a color managed environment where actually the system is doing what we call a scene referred scenario where it's actually looking at the camera footage and applying the correct color science essentially to it to get it into a good starting point so that we have a nice place to begin our grade and it helps us unify multiple different camera types as well. So let me jump into a different timeline to show you what I mean by that. So let me jump into this previous example. So in this example, we have our grade done. Okay, very nice. I'm actually going to just come into the color page and quickly remove that grade so I can show you what's going on. And I'm going to come back to the edit page. So at the moment, we're working in a non color managed project, which means that we're working in DaVinci YRGB and there's no work going on within the system to help sort of get us into a good starting point. Let me turn that on and I should just set it up in the normal way that I do for this kind of project. We've been shooting in sort of a log format here and hit save and you see that DaVinci Resolve has basically applied a sort of starting grade to our footage. In fact, it's just kind of correcting the science. So it's moving it from what we shot in camera from log through to our desired output in this case, which is Rec 709. So there we go. That's all very well and good. We like that. That's in most cases very useful. But let's say we were working in another part of our sequence where actually we didn't want to be color managed. And you can see here what's happened is because I've done color management, this whole timeline is being affected as well. And if I wanted to change and do another timeline, that would also be affected by the color management because the color management settings are project wide. But now what's pretty cool about this is if I wanted to, I could actually come into this particular timeline, right click, timeline and timeline settings. And then let's say I didn't want this timeline to be color managed. I can actually, instead of just the format monitor and output tabs, we now have this color tab. And this means that we can uncheck the use project settings. We can change this to the, no, the normal color science of DaVinci YRGB, leave everything as it is, hit OK. And then what we'll notice is everything has gone back to how it was. But if we wanted to create a new timeline, for example, and let me just duplicate this one and have this one as a color managed timeline, I could very easily turn that back on and then go to color and then use project settings, hit OK. And then when I load this one up, what you'll see is this one has color management working and it's been applied perfectly. And if I jump back to the other one, we're now back in the standard space. This one is genuinely a massive time saver. I spent a lot of time working on projects where we have got to stabilize a lot of handheld clips and it used to take an awfully long time because we would simply have to go through one at a time, stabilizing a shot, move on to the next one, stabilize the shot, move on to the next one, stabilize the shot, and it took forever. So now in the inspector, we can very quickly stabilize a lot of shots all together. So for example, these shots here, there we go. They don't need a lot of stabilization, but I could very easily select them come up to stabilization. This option wouldn't have been there normally if I'd selected multiple clips and I can simply hit stabilize. And you can see here, it's gonna go off. It's gonna analyze the five clips, zip through and apply stabilization to all of them. Now, of course, in some cases we don't need to stabilize in this particular instance, but the point is I can do it very, very quickly indeed. So there we go. Those are my favorite new updates and features inside DaVinci Resolve 18.5. Those are the ones that I think are the most impactful for me, the ones that I'm going to be using day in and day out in my working life as a professional video editor and content producer. How about yourselves? Let me know in the comments below which ones are going to be the best ones for you. Which ones are you going to be using the most? It would be really useful to know. It'd be great to see which ones you think are the most useful. But for now, that's the video, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. There will be some more videos coming soon. So if you haven't already, hit the subscription button. It'd be great to see you on the channel more often. It really helps the channel as well. It means that I keep producing content like this. I appreciate I haven't been here for a little while and I've been missing you all. And if you're at this point in the video watching, I appreciate it. Thank you so much indeed. It's great to see you all, and I hope to see you in another video very, very soon. But for now, take care.